welcome to the Why With Jimmy channel with your host, Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much for stopping by and giving up your valuable time just to watch this video. I am very, very grateful. Welcome to a part of the series of the channel, which is called Explaining Wine Terminology. Uh, so we give a topic that maybe you might have heard in wine before, a certain phrase or word, and we give you some information behind it. Now, often on this channel, we give lots of information, but I am also going to be offering the section for beginners as well. So this is explaining wine terminology on tannins for beginners. Um, if you do have any comments or questions, you can get in touch with the comment section below this video on the world of YouTube. And um, please make sure that you click subscribe and the little like thumb button thing, please. And also you can get in touch via the social media you see at the bottom of every slide and you'll see that uh, there at Wine with Jimmy and so on and so on. Now, let's begin with the world of tannin for beginners. So if you do drink wine, and I hope you are watching this because you do, at one point or another, you probably heard somebody say something about tannin. Maybe the wine is tannic. There's lots of tannin. I've got ripe tannins or something along those lines. Maybe you don't know what they are. Maybe you don't know why they matter in wine. So while Knowing this terminology and having all the information behind it might not necessarily be essential to your consumption of wine. It can actually give you some real key bits of information around maybe wine styles you do or don't like. So it's quite important just to learn a little bit about it if you are a bit of a wine drinker and also um, a little bit of health as well and potentially why we get headaches and why we don't, tannins may or may not be linked to that. So I will cross that bridge at the end of this presentation. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. So first of all, what are tannins? So tannins are actually um, formed by uh, plants. Now they are kind of like a defense system for plants and certain fruits that plants will produce. And it really is against defending against things like uh, microbial attacks, so things that are in the air, funguses and so on, but also really animals and birds. Um, so this tannin is produced by plants in things like oak bark, if you'll see here, oak powder will have it there for as well, grape seeds and also grape skins, and they are produced so the plant really has a defense system. Maybe the bird will start to sort of gnaw at the, the bark and it's too tannic and they don't like it. Grape seeds, which contain all the DNA for that grape potentially to spread its seed, um, that needs to be protected. So that has tannin. Grape skins, which are the outside of the grape that protects everything inside it, full of tannin potentially. Another thing to protect it against predators like birds, for instance. So really, it's one of plant defense. Now, these tannins can be released from things like the grapes that we use for wine in the production of the wine. And certain grapes will have higher amounts of these tannins, things like Cabernet Sauvignon, for, a, uh, for, for example, which produce a very very tannic sensation in the mouth, which we're about to talk through very shortly. So we know what they are in really the world, in nature. Where do they come from in terms of wine? Well, they come from the grape and you'll see a kind of partially peeled grape just here. The three S's are where we find tannins. So stems, skins, and seeds, sometimes in English called pips, which is very English. But stems, skins, and seeds will all find amounts of tannins. And classically, the most we find for most wine is found in its skins, okay? But all of this then, if you think about the plant defense, is really so the, the bird or whatever animal it may be can't get to the grape. So it's like a security system at that point. So, 
Okay, they're from the skins, seeds, and stems. The next thing is that tannin is also desired in winemaking because tannin is an antioxidant. So let's suddenly just make a nice big announcement. Wines with more tannins have more antioxidants. Yay, that's better for you and me, certainly better for your heart and blood flow. So yeah, good antioxidants, but as a wine, it is good because it protects it against oxygen. So wines with greater amounts of tannins, such as red wines, will have more ability to age in bottle. Uh, so longer time you can keep it for. So this produces age-worthy red wines, things like Cabernet Sauvignon, things like Rioja, things like Malbecs, and things like Merlot, and the list can go on, of course. So, okay, what do they do to you and me? What is the effect in the mouth? Well, first of all, tannins can cause a sense of dryness in the mouth. And sometimes you'll hear people say that the wine is astringent or it is bitter. These are ways of saying that dryness. I won't go into too much more detail about that. You can look at the more advanced version of this video if you wish, which is explaining wine terminology on tannins, if you want more information on that. Also, tannin is a structural component. It adds body in the mouth. So this means that you will find fuller bodies wines being uh, being made from uh, from wines that are more tannic. It must also be noted though that you, me and everybody have differences. They have we have different genetics, we have different compositions in the mouth, we have inter and intra differences of saliva production and so on and so on. So we will all experience tannin in different amounts and in different parts of your mouth. Some people will say, oh, you only get tannin here. Well, a lot of it is in the gums, but sometimes on your tongue as well, but it's a drying sensation. Some of us are more sensitive than others uh, in terms of tannin. Also, um, the effect in the mouth. So you'll see here that we can talk about wines that have unripe tannins, which taste more green and astringent, often in slightly more paler wines. And darker wines can be more ripe and rich, OK, uh, and give more body. So sometimes you can find more bitterness. Sometimes you can find more fullness in the mouth, for example, as well. Now, we all really want you to experience tannin, um, but if you're not understanding it with wine consumption, you can try, try everyday items. And this is what we will say is the black tea test or the black grape skin test. So if you want to try this little trick, so make sure that you make, um, or let's say make three cups of tea. You make your first cup of tea, which we call in the United Kingdom, the builder's tea. And that is tea with a bit of milk. OK, normally brewed tea. So don't leave the tea bag in too long and a little bit of milk. Now, this might be sacrilegious to some of you around the world and fair enough. But remember, different cultures, different courses. And we have a very, very soft liquid. There really isn't any bitterness because the milk has actually negated that bitterness. Then make a black tea with leaving the tea bag in for a respectable amount of time, maybe only like a minute or so, and see how, and maybe it's just loose tea leaves you're using or tea bag, whatever you have, and you'll find that you have um, a, a little bit of a bitter tea, but then make a tea with maybe a couple of tea bags or more loose tea leaves and leave it in for many more minutes. And you'll, of course, see a darker black tea. And that will be more bitter and tannic. Why? Because tannin is also found in tea leaves. Uh, and so it gives you the same sensation in the mouth. If you're not a tea fan, maybe you don't like caffeine, you can use black grapes. Um, actually, go out and buy some green grapes, some red grapes, and some black grapes, and then peel the skin off those grapes. You only need to do one grape, not the whole bunch. Uh, eat the green skin, eat the red skin, eat the black skin, and you'll see an increase in bitterness and tannin as you go through that little test. 
So that's a little test for you. You can do at home nice and easily. Um, also, I want to mention now many people will tell you or you may have heard on the grapevine that certain things do certain things to you in terms of a wine. Maybe the sulfites cause something. Now, I just want to quickly mention that sulfites do not have any scientific link to headaches or illnesses. Moreover, respiratory problems, problems with breathing, that's why they are identified on bottles of wine. Um, they don't really uh, have a link to creating headaches or hangovers. Tannins have more of a logical link, but some people don't believe this necessary, so I'll leave it out there for you to decide. But really, tannin is a drying sensation. It actually really reduces the saliva and actually can dehydrate your mouth and dehydrate your head. And this is what can cause a bit more of a, a sore head in the morning. So potentially, more tannic wines can create a bit more dehydration, which may be an issue. A way around this is to drink water, really to hydrate you through the process. Wine, water, wine, water, wine, water. That's the way forward. Okay, so that's my introduction done on tannins for you, the beginners. I hope you found this nice and useful. If you require a bit more, a bit more information to sink your teeth into, then go to the full version of this video on tannin. And please have a look if you are interested in learning more about professional courses or maybe you're studying professional courses, take a look at my e-learning portal. That's winewithjimmy.com where you can find a huge volume of resource to help you through wine knowledge and qualifications to give you the confidence to ace your examinations, WSET, things like that as well. Okay, well, thank you so much. Remember to comment, remember to like as well. And if you do find yourself in London, please, I have wine schools and a wine bar. So come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. See you soon. Bye.